Hi, this is Rebecca Martinez at ArtsCalifornia.net and today I have the pleasure of speaking with William Lum, who is an amazing watercolor artist. Um, William, how long have you been painting? Well, I started December 93 uh -huh. and I painted for like four years and then I quit for 17, retired from work and moved up here and then I started again. Because you had another career in that 17 years. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Do you care to mention just briefly what it was? I worked for the city of Sunnyvale. I was a fireman, policeman, and EMT at the same time. Wow. That's 30 years. So you're a good guy to know if we get in trouble. Well, when they call 911, I would usually respond. Uh -huh. So um, you brought this nice little piece in? Yes. That's my very first watercolor painting. Uh huh. It's a long story, but I discovered my family. I didn't know my birth parents, and then in 93 I found them. And my father told me that I had a great uncle who was a famous watercolor painter. So I found a cheap watercolor set and some cheap paper in the closet, and I painted my first painting of my neighborhood, and I did it in the evening in the fire station. It's nice. I can't believe this is your first attempt. It's really amazing. Well, yeah. First attempt, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh -huh. I had no clue what, how things work, and and that's kind of a good thing because I was free to do whatever I'm going to do. I didn't have any preconceived notions or anything, and that's uh -huh. what I painted. Yeah. Uh -huh. And actually, knowing where your watercolor journey led you, it's kind of um, prophetic that you chose to do your own neighborhood because I feel like in looking at your paintings, you do choose to record what your surroundings are. Well, I actually had thought about this. Okay. So, I'm gonna paint a painting for the first time ever. I said, what do I paint? I said, well, what did, what did Van Gogh paint? Or what did, you know, and I, I thought, you know, he painted his neighborhood. And you know, all the great artists painted people and buildings and things that were around there that today we can appreciate because that was like a slice of life of that time. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's a good reason to paint. It so, is. And that's why I painted my neighborhood because, you know, maybe 10, 20 years from now, you look back at the thing and go, oh, yeah, it's changed, but that's the way it was. Uh -huh. And so that was kind of my uh, reasoning behind painting that street corner. Uh-huh. I feel like you've, you've um, taken painting your neighborhood to a whole new level, especially living up here. This area is rich in history and interesting things to paint, and you've captured some of them. Can we, we talk about them here? Sure. Well, th this, as you know, I stopped painting for 17 years, uh -huh. and I had put some of my stuff in storage, all the art stuff be a stretch sheet, a full sheet of paper, uh -huh. and 17 years later, well, I'm not doing much up here in Roseville, I, maybe I should try painting it. So I pulled out this piece of paper, and I started applying watercolor paint to it, and it just soaked in like a blotter, because uh -huh. the paper had been damaged over the 17 years and in storage, out, not storage in my house, but in a, you know, like, one of those uh, garage, yeah. yeah, and I go, well, that doesn't work. I said, well, you know, I don't really care. I'm going to use this paper one way or another. So I grabbed a bottle of ink that was also damaged by 17 years. It was a bottle of black ink, but it turned green-gray. I go, what do I care? Uh -huh. So I started painting this painting. I just started one little corner, and I, I worked around with the little black ink stuff. And I, I said, well, I got the shape of koi. I'll put colored ink because the watercolor won't take. And so I end up painting this koi painting. And it was like, okay, that's not bad. It's really beautiful. Look at how brilliant those colors so, are. So the point of this thing is not giving up. It didn't matter how bad my material was. Most people go, oh, this is no good, and they'll throw it in the trash. But I, I'm going to use it. Uh -huh. And I persisted. And that's what made it work. You, you just can't give up and you just got to go for it. And, and often your paintings are better if you don't care about the result. You don't worry about what anybody does. Well, you know, worst thing that happens, I throw it in the trash. I don't care. Yeah. And it surprised me that it came out and it worked. It's, it's beautiful. So this is, this is one of the first pieces you did when you started back in. Yes, this is an early 
Or okay. The, yeah. All right. Okay, what else do we have here? Well, this relates to my family. My mother worked as a waitress in Chinatown in this restaurant. We, we moved from Sacramento back to San Francisco. So this is San Francisco Chinatown? Yes. Okay. And actually, we lived about a couple of houses down and some tenement there. My mother worked at this restaurant. My sister worked there during her high school. And that famous artist that I was talking about, I had actually the arranged family arranged for me to meet him, uh -huh. and we went into this restaurant. Oh, used to restaurant. What was his name again? Don Kingman. Don Kingman. Okay. Long story there, but first time I met him, it didn't go well. Oh. <laughs> because apparently my grandfather robbed him at gunpoint in Oakland. Oh. <laughs> to escape the U.S. because he was wanted by the gangsters and he had to flee for a while and took money out of the register from the store. Oh, okay. And, you know, he eventually returned, but the father, the grandfather never forgot that. I mean, the Don Kingman. So he had a stroke. He was given a workshop for that week. Uh -huh. And I had to take him to the restroom because he couldn't walk very well. And so we walked him in there and after he used the restroom, he turned around and said, your grandfather robbed me. And I said, oh my God, I'm going to see this guy for a week. This is not going to go well. So I just don't say anything. I just paint it. And uh, every morning he would have a critique. Oh. This is a workshop that others from all over the world came in. I was allowed to pay a reduced fee so I can meet, study my, under him. meet him. Yeah. I didn't really study him, but I, I got to meet him. And during the course of the week, uh, every morning he'd pull out a painting and he'd go over and he, I hid mines in the bottom of the stack. I just wanted, I wanted me to fly on the wall. And he pulls it out and he goes, he looks at it. He goes, who did this painting? <laughs> I go, oh my God, that's my painting. And then he goes, I, I raise my hand and he goes, this is good. <laughs> and then by the end of the week, on the last day, he was painting the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh -huh. And that evening, uh, we had the farewell banquet for this group. And his family came and I came and one more time I had to take escort him to the restroom because, you know, the, of the stroke he was uh, a little bit handicapped. And I'm going to the bathroom and walking through the kitchen of this Chinese restaurant in Chinatown and he stops and he says, you know what, you're a family and don't you forget it. And you're a good painter. It was just like... That gives me goosebumps. Oh. Yeah. Well, that had it affected me. I mean, I, I thought, well, I'm glad I'm over the robbing the grandfather thing. <laughs> but, uh, and that was the only artist workshop I've ever been to, but it was really to meet and connect with family. Yeah. And so that was that yeah. story. That's why this right. painting. It's, it's beautiful. I love this painting. What else do we have here? Well, now that I moved up to... Placer County. I'm looking for things to paint and I got down to Folsom. There's this bridge. The rainbow bridge. And I was at the rock and I was looking across and watching kayakers go across and I'm, I took a picture of it for reference. This is one of my favorite spots by the way. It, this does happen to be a lot of favorite. Yeah, uh, I've ridden my, taken my kayak there many times. So I was painting and I thought, well, they call it the Rainbow Bridge. I think I'll give it a little bit more rainbow color. And so I enhanced the color and somebody was saying, you know, your style, you have that signature blue, which I never thought about, but you know. So anyway, this was very popular, but this is how I'm going to start to paint again in the, after moving up here. I love that piece. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. And I, I know that I'm, I have been following you on Facebook, and the amount of history and research that you do for many of your paintings is incredible. I know recently you did one of a scene in um, Rockland, and you researched all of the districts in Rockland. I think you said they were 15. It's Roseville. Roseville. Yeah. You said there were 15 districts in Roseville, and you included a map of well, all of the districts. The research is amazing. There's 47 plus neighborhood uh, uh, neighborhoods. Uh huh. 
There's 15 active neighborhood associations that are also have a website. Wow. Uh, yeah, so when I paint anything, it doesn't matter what, it could be that Rainbow Bridge. Uh -huh. Well, I want to know about it. What, what is the story? Everything has a story. I don't care if it's a, a mouse, a plant, a building, uh -huh. a person. There's stories behind everything. And I want to know what I painted. And I, if somebody asked me, what is the meaning behind this painting? I know. I know the yeah, history. That's nice. And so that I do, first, yeah, that comes out of my science background, sort of. It's a, that's a long, another long story. But I usually, when I take a, do a painting, I will write the exact time I saw that. Oh. And I'll write the date, the location, and on the back of every one of my paintings, from the first one, yeah. that information is in the back. And I number them all in series. So, in science, I did, as a youth, and I mean 10 years old, I'm out doing field science work, looking, collecting animals, you know, I was part of this group, we were doing, uh, looking for spiders in the mm -hmm. western United States. And, uh, you know, we take notes, you write when you saw this thing, what time, what, what was the environment, well that, that habit is ingrained in me. That's nice. And, Plus, you know, as you're a cop or where you're writing police reports, and everything is documented. And I, it's a habit. So I started writing a little bit about my, since I started posting on Facebook, I started writing, well, this is blah, 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 blah. And it just expanded. And then I realized people actually read what I oh, write. Yeah. That's what surprises the heck out of me. And some people will just say it's as significant, as significant as what I painted. So I... I'm very careful. I try to write a couple of paragraphs about the history or the story behind the thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I never consider myself a writer. I, I'm not a writer, but people enjoy reading. Yeah, things, they so do. I, they do. I have actually shared the back of your paintings with customers at Persimmon. They're okay. always very interested in the story behind the painting. So it's a good thing to keep doing. Keep it yes. up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I will do that. And and this last piece, I know you seem to have an interest in um, trains. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. <laughs> uh, it was Laurie Humphrey at the Persimmon Gallery says, well, trains seem to be interesting. Oh, okay. I said, okay. I'll bring a couple of train paintings up. But this... Uh, Roseville is noted for its train history. In fact, it kind of shaped and funded the town. Uh -huh. And I was walking along here, and this train came out of this building, and I go, that's the location historically where the roundhouses were, mm -hmm. and which are not there anymore. Right. And so it turns out this is a diesel shop. And I read about how the trains are processed, what kind of engines, when they're at. And so it, it's a trigger. It's just it's like a seed. The picture is the seed that gets planted, and then I'm going to let this grow. Uh -huh. And I get all I get to learn something about it. So every week I'm learning something new, and I'm sharing that with others. I feel like you're kind of turning into an encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> well, Google is an encyclopedia. <laughs> but I and the other wonderful thing that happens when I post. I post every Friday morning on Facebook. Okay. Is that people respond to this? Uh huh. So somebody will see this painting and says, "I worked at that train yard." Yeah. And did you know this? This is. And that? you gather more information. And I learn more that is not on the internet, but from personal experiences. And people will tell me the story behind the painting that I painted, and that makes that painting richer. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. Well, I think we're we're really lucky to have you as an asset in our community. Is there anything else you wanted to mention? No, that's, oh, well, I, this year I'll be part of two <laughs> studio tours. <laughs> that's right. This is the first one time I'll be with the, uh, used to be called the Art and Chocolate, but it's the Art Studio Trek, and it's the end of September in Roseville and Rockland primarily. Roseville and Rockland, uh -huh. And then in November, there's a larger Placer Art Studio Tour with 100 artists. I mean, how, how could you not go on this tour? You do have to go and, on it. And I'm, yeah. part, I'm part of the uh, Roseville, Rockland section. And I think we're going to be talking to the planners of that tour in one of our interviews oh, yeah. in the next couple of weeks. They'll have a lot of good tidbits to add about that. If I was not on the tour, 
I would go see the tour. I, I usually participate in the tour about average every other year because I like to go on the tour. Yes. yes. But I'll be on the tour this year, too. And it's free. How it can is. You... I know. You can't miss it. And we're going to have the guides at Persimmon probably next week. We'll have the printed guides. Great. Yeah. All right. I guess that's it. Thank you so much, William. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you.